All right, so this video, Kipsters, is about um, whenever you're given a formula. Formulas are basically a predetermined way to find an answer. They're actually fast, um, smart cuts that help you to figure out the answer you're looking for um, without having you to figure out what the formula is or how to find it. So basically, all you're doing is substituting in values for uh, the given values that you're given. Okay, uh, let's start with this to see how... Um, this actually works. Whenever given a formula, you always want to use this acronym, FISU. That's F S S U. First stands for formula. So find your formula and then list all the variables in that formula. Next step is to substitute. That means plug all of your values that you found out back into the original formula. Okay? Then uh, solve. Solve. Use order operations to evaluate. And then finally, don't forget your units at the end. Okay? All right. So I see that there is a formula here. V equals pi uh, r squared. That means pi times r. There's a multiplication sign going on in between the pi and the r. And then r squared. So r squared means r times r. Okay? All right, so let us use the formula to figure this out. I see my formula, v equals pi r squared. So I am first going to write all the variables of the formula. v equals, variables are just the letters. Pi equals, r equals. <clears throat> okay, let's, let's read my problem now. A cylinder has a radius of three centimeters. Hmm, this R probably stands for radius, so I'm gonna put three right there. Has a radius of three centimeters and is 20 centimeters tall. Oh, there's one more thing we forgot to include in this formula. The formula is actually V equals pi R squared times H, and H stands for the height. All right, so the formula is V equals pi R squared H. So, H stands for the height, so that's how tall it is. So we know it's 20 centimeters tall. And what is the volume of the cylinder using the formula? So I don't know what the volume is, so I'm going to put a question mark. And then please leave pi in your answer. So pi in this case is going to remain pi. All right. Now let me go to my formula, and I'm trying to find volume. So volume should by, be by itself in the formula, and it is by itself in the formula. So let me use that. V equals pi, let me substitute this back into the original formula. Pi is pi. What's happening between pi and r? Multiplication multiplied by r is 3. We're squaring that. Next is h times h is 20. All right, so we've figured out our formula and the variables and what they're equal to. Now we've substituted. Now we're going to solve using order operations. All right, let's look for any uh, groups. No groups, any exponents? Yes. Group and then copy everything else. V equals pi times space times 20. All right, three squared, three squared means 3 times 3, and that's 9. So that's 9 right there. And let me see. Uh, no more exponents, multiplication, division. Yes. Let me multiply that first. When I'm multiplying, I can multiply in any order because of the associative property. And 9 times 20 is 180. And I have one more grouping left. And that's 100 pi times 180 is 180 pi. And the last step is to add your units in. Units are, for volume, is cubic. So I have cubic centimeters. Or volume equals 180 pi centimeters cubed. Okay? All right, so that is uh, what you do when you have a formula. Let's do one more. 
All right, the area of a rectangle is 30 squared inches. Do I see a formula? Yes, I do. I'll stop myself. Remember phys u? Uh, list all of the variables in the formula for the f part. So the formula is a equals lw. So a equals, l equals, and w equals. All right. Uh, the area of a rectangle is 30 square inches. So I know the area is 30 square inches. The width of the rectangle is 5 inches. So the W is 5. What is the length of the rectangle? So L is what I'm trying to figure out. Now, when I substitute this back in, I want the formula to give me what the value would be for L. So if this is the formula for area, but I want to find what L is, I'm going to divide both sides by W because I want the W's to cancel out so I can get L just by itself on one side. Now the formula is A equals A divided by W equals L. And that's what I want. I want to solve for L. Alright? This is an L, by the way. Alright, so let me plug this into this formula because this is what's going to help me to find L, the length. Uh, area is 30, all over W is 5, equals the length. Oh, okay, let's just solve now. Alright, uh, actually that was the substitute. This is the formula. This is the revised formula to figure out what variable we're trying to solve for. And then um, we have... 30 divided by 5, let's do that first, equals L. 30 divided by 5 is 6. And 6 what? At our units in at the end. 6 inches. Length is simply the unit itself. So the answer is 6 inches. Okay. Um, now you didn't have to do it this way. I did it this way to save myself a whole lot of time. Uh, you could use the original formula and you'll still get the same answer. Uh, let's use the original formula of A equals LW. Alright, A is 30 equals L is still L because we don't know what it is times W is 5. Alright, now let's solve. Uh, order of operations 30 equals L times 5 is 5L now L is not by itself, so I'm going to have to divide both sides by 5. So I get L equals 30 divided by 5, which is 6 again. So either way you do it, you're going to get the answer of 6. I just like to make it simpler in the beginning. All right? Hope you enjoy.